The spot which has finally been given to Mr. Hazare to be conducting his fast is a spot which had become extremely controversial just a couple of months back because another anti-corruption crusader, Baba Ramdev, when he had made an attempt, who also happens to be a spiritual yoga guru, a very popular in <coughs> different parts of the world, when he had attempted to undergo a similar fast, his, his supporters were brutally beaten up and it had led to a huge uproar in parliament and in several other parts of the country. Now we're seeing Anna Hazare being given permission at the same ground. First and foremost, the Delhi police and the civic agencies are very clear that there cannot be a law and order problem that could be erupting in the place where this permission has been given. There were six conditions which uh, Anna Hazare and his supporters had asked for. The most controversial one, or the main bone of contention at the moment, at least as we speak, is what should be the duration of this fast or this protest. Anna Hazare has been saying that he wants this ground for one month, but the permission which has officially been given to him so far is only for two weeks. So first things first, the government will really have to deal with this mess as to what will happen once Anna Hazare goes on this fast and once the two-week time period tenure is over. Now, Bupendra, as you're speaking, I want to let our viewers know that they're looking at live video right now of crowds. It looks like thousands of protesters as they're waiting for Ana Hazare to leave the jail and also to uh, eventually start his hunger strike. Now, Hazare has said the anti-corruption bill that the government has already proposed is not strong enough because it primarily exempts the prime minister and judges from being investigated. So do you expect this outcry that we've seen the past couple of days to actually push the government into stronger reforms? I'm sure uh, you're looking at live video, which is coming out uh, straight outside the Tihar jail, which also happens to be Asia's largest jail, where Anna Hazare is currently lodged. And a closer look at the profile of the protesters who have gathered, whether it's Sehar Jail or India Gate or many other places across the country, suggests that these are not necessarily ordinary day-to-day -day folks. There is a lot of politics also which has gotten involved in this. The principal opposition party, the BJP for instance, has asked its workers to be out on the streets to try and galvanize or fan this protest movement which has been started by Anna Hazare. On the specific point of can the government really concede to the main demand which is being made by Anna Hazare? No. There was a debate that took place in Parliament yesterday from the Prime Minister to the Home Minister to several other senior ministers of the UK government. They made it clear that as far as the principle of lawmaking goes, that principle, that privilege exists only with those who have been elected by the people and not by anyone like Anna Hazare or anyone else who may claim to be the leader of a civil society. As far as the question of inclusion of the Prime Minister in this new anti-graft bill is concerned, even there the government has made it clear that even if they do agree to the demand of bringing in the Prime Minister under the ambit of this new bill, the clauses will be applicable only and only once the Prime Minister has demitted office. And that's something which is not acceptable to Anna Hazare. Which is why I'm saying that by allowing Anna Hazare this two-week time period to carry on with this protest march, the government in a sense has done nothing else but simply bought some more time.